Hello and welcome to the Learning Center. I'm Lillian Travellini and I have a guest today that's going to fascinate all you gardeners and people who love flowers and love nature. My guest is Ron Galbraith. Hi, welcome Ron. Dawn. Dawn, sorry. I kept practicing Dawn, but here it is, Dawn. And uh, you were a landscape designer, right? Yes. What is a landscape designer? A, a landscape designer helps people who want gardens, uh, who want whatever function you want your landscape to perform. Um, if you want to set up a vegetable garden, if you want to set up a, a perennial border, if you want to uh, have a place to play for your kids, if you want a storage area, a landscape designer is somebody who can help put those needs together into an actual plan for your yard. I see. Mm -hmm. And so tell me, is there a plan that most people choose like above all others? It's, it's all individually tailored. Yeah. There's no one size fits all. Right. That's what's so nice about it. Right. So when did you begin, become a landscape designer? I, I dropped out of a graduate program in molecular biology, didn't know what I wanted to do for a number of years, but I started taking courses in pottery. And in working in a studio environment with ceramic artists, I, I, over a period of a couple of years, I figured out what for me doing art was. Yeah. I really hadn't thought about myself as being terribly creative until then. Um, that was when I realized that I had an inner fount of ideas that would never stop. Yeah. Um, I was a potter for about eight years. Um, realized that it's not really a way many people can make a living. But as a child, even in elementary school, I'd been a very enthusiastic naturalist, amateur yeah. naturalist, and fascinated with what grows in the, in, in the landscape growing up around Washington, D.C. And I decided to put the design skills that I learned in doing pottery together with my Love interest in nature and the ecology um, and help people with landscapes. So how did you learn the techniques of landscape designing? By doing it. By doing it. Well, that's always a good way to do <laughs> and, anything. And, yeah. and by studying a great deal yeah. and by going to places like Tower Hill Botanical Garden, the Arnold Arboretum, spending time there regularly taking detailed field notes, researching the plants that I found there, reading a great deal, and touring gardens, observing plants in the landscape that my interest had been piqued by reading. Right. Um, so if one of That's how I was, started learning yeah. about it. But you really learn by doing yeah. in terms of what you need to do to improve the soil, what do you need to do to maintain the plants, learning the weeds, right. learning how to distinguish weeds from plants, which is actually a very advanced skill. Right. Um, so if one of my viewers wanted to start being a landscape designer, this is what you would tell them to start doing, right? You can or take there courses. Yeah. There, there are courses available. Um, I have never really, I, I mean, there are courses available online, there are courses available um, in adult ed centers, yeah. um, but I particularly recommend, uh, you know, reading for people who learn, learn well that way. There's a vast amount of information also on, on, the, on the, the internet that um, various plants people have put out. There's tons of, of uh, films on on YouTube, if you're if you learn better that way. Um, but there's yeah. it's a very good uh, 
way of being creative and getting a great deal of satisfaction, I'm sure, when that is completely designed and blossoming. One of the things about a garden is that it's never altogether definitively done. Yeah. You can continue to work on it. Yeah. Um, uh, but it is extremely satisfying. Can you tell me about your first um, uh, customer that you had to design one for? And how did that turn out? Um, he was actually, uh, you know, an old friend of my partner's. Right. Um, who they'd, they'd had a garden in their backyard for a long time. It was destroyed in the course of construction. They put in um, a parking area and the, the people who did that basically destroyed the whole backyard. Oh my goodness. And they thought, oh, well, we'll just redo it ourselves. And six months went by, a year <laughs> went by, and they had never found the time to do it themselves. Right. So they hired me to do it. So there are jobs out there for landscapes designers, right? Oh, yes. Many of them. Um, as long as there's construction being done, there's a need for, yeah. for landscape. Right. Um, right. Um, that garden, I, I reassembled. They, they realized in a fairly quickly that I actually knew more than they did about what would do well there and how to arrange it. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I arranged all the beds, I planted them up. It took about three years, actually. Oh, for the completion. And at the, at the end of that, the, um, um, they, they actually rather quickly got two separate requests that it be put on the Secret Gardens of Cambridge Wow. Tour. Wow. Um, That's great. That's quite an honor. Yeah. Secret Gardens of Cambridge. Well, there are secret garden tours Everywhere. in many places. Oh, yeah. 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 But your first uh, design accomplished that. Yes. You can be very proud. Yeah. So viewers, there's a future for you, right? <laughs> now, tell me uh, about some of the plantings. What, who chooses the plantings? Well, if, you know, if a client wants uh, you know, I, I, uh, l particularly loves peonies and yeah. wants to grow lots of peonies, that can be done. You can yeah. do anything they want. Do they have different colors? Oh, yeah. They do. yeah. So you, I but, can have... But, I, but, um, um, what happens then? Well, <laughs> people often don't have a very clear idea of what they want. Really? And one of the things that I can do is help clarify, help people clarify their notions of what they want and what is possible. Um, so in other words, say they wanted all orchids as plants. Well, that, that, that's... Impossible here, that's, right? Yes, that's, that's, that's not likely in this, in this area. What are but, good plants for this area? that would look beautiful and be hardy. There are over 50,000 plants that in, would cultivation, be good in cultivation here yeah. that, are, that, are, that are hardy here. So it's, it's um, I can't begin to enumerate them all here. But some of them, what is the hardiest? But part, part of what I do is not just establish plants, but also establish areas, establish it's an extension of architecture, establishing spaces for living. I see. Where do you want the kids to romp? Where do you want to entertain people? Where would, where would a patio be appropriate? Right. How would you enclose that patio in plants in the same sort of way that if it were a room, it would be enclosed by the walls in your house? I see. So you would do that with plantings? That would be shrubs, but perhaps they give them privacy? Um, shrubs, trees, also some perennials. Some yeah. some grasses have a uh, presence through the winter right. that uh, still look good in the snow. Really, grass? Mm -hmm. They can do that. Big, tall grasses. Oh, tall. Not lawn grasses. Yeah. So where do you get those lawn grasses? Well. How did you plant them in the winter? Do you plant them in the winter or the spring? No, no, no. I plant them in the spring. 
I can you can plant them anytime. Oh. You can plant plants through most of the season. Right. Um, particular plants have particular needs. Some of them need to be planted in the spring. Some of them need to be planted in the fall. It depends on the particular plant. And they would live through the winter? Yes. Which plants would do that? Can you, I mean, I, I've never known of any. In New England, you, you can plant in the fall and they grow through the winter? No, but they will survive the winter and then they'll grow well the next year. I see. Um, you have hostas growing in your garden. I do? You do. Now that I have them? Well, you have them. They're, they're sleeping now because oh. it's January. What do hostas look like? This is really something. I know nothing about plants. I know what a sunflower is, lilies, roses, violets, but I, I'm very I'm a novice about it. And I would just plant things in a row if I wanted to do that. That's why I need a landscape designer as you are. Because you would come to my house and then what would you do? So you come to my house, would you draw out something there and show me a plan? I, we would spend a couple of hours talking about your experiences with gardens, your associations with gardens, your associations with particular plants, what kinds of plants you love the most, right. what you want your garden to do for you. Right. Um, this is and, going to be a comedy and show. And then right. I would come back and um, make out lists of possible plants for you I to see. consider. Yeah. Okay. And so, then together we could proceed to uh, talking about particular areas right. of your property, how to lay things out, right. what kinds of plants for where. Yeah. Well, right now I, I've told you what the plants I know. You'd have to really say, well, what colors do you like? You would do that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, is that important? The oh. colors have to go together. For me, it is. Yeah. Um, for some people, it may not matter as much. It might not matter as much for you. No, it matters. I like color. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, uh, one dimension of what we do in making a garden is making landscape pictures. Landscape pictures? Well, it, it, you look at a garden bed from various points of view, and it needs to look like something that you might be, might be interested in painting or photographing from those major points of view. Okay. The colors need to work together. The textures need to work together. There needs to be variety in terms of height and texture and color. How do uh, you, but they I, need to coordinate. Do you want me to feel the flowers before you plant them so I can feel the texture? Well, when I, I talk about texture, I'm talking about does it have great big leaves? Yeah. Does it have thin grassy leaves? Yeah. Does it have ferny leaves? That's an important way in which your eye distinguishes between one plant and the next. I see. And gardens, any form of art is about a combination of unity and variety. It needs enough unity so that it needs to feel like a coherent whole, yeah. a composition, and it needs variety to keep your interest so that it's not just a boring old hedge. Yeah. Well, I mean, a hedge could keep my interest. <laughs> <laughs> or a, a hedge is useful for surrounding a garden yeah. room right. yeah. and then giving you a sense of enclosure right. and being a background for what you're looking at. Right. But it's really a backdrop like this is. Well, yeah. Well, you know, uh, you're, uh, you're opening my eyes to, now when I walk through a garden, I mean, there's all these things that I have to look for and, and digest and think whether I like them or not, right? Well, it, and, it needn't be a burden. But right. you're, you're an artist yourself. I know. And, uh, and to the extent that you enjoy it, yeah. I can help guide you through the process. Good. To the extent to which you feel like, oh, maybe this is too much work. Yeah. I can take over that. I'll tell for you, you right now, it's too much work <laughs> <laughs> without even doing it. I you know my husband was a gardener 
But he said to me one day, why did you go out there and weed it? It's so nice to feel that dirt. And so I went out and I saw all these green things. I didn't know weeds from flowers, so I pulled them all out. And he almost had a heart attack. He pulled out his plants. So that's what you'll be working with. Well, different people enjoy different things. I, I would enjoy it when it's all completed. So I think in my case, and I don't know, some viewers might need you from the very beginning, and telling you, just plan it all. Uh, I know nothing about gardens. Would you do that? Plan it all out and then give me a design. I would still talk with them in great detail about right. their taste to all get right. a sense of what would work for them individually. I see. So what if they use their taste is in diamonds and rubies? Would that give you a clue? <laughs> Designing a garden? No, really. You know, you would give them sparkling and red. It, it, it helps. I can, I can often tell a lot just by seeing the inside of someone's home, yeah. what their choices are in decorating. Yeah. Often it's a similar sensibility you extend to the garden. Well, I'm so happy that there are landscape designers. It's a necessary field that should be increased by many people. Well, a lot of people are satisfied by putting a few plants around the foundation of their house and having lawn elsewhere. Yeah. But landscape designers are helpful when you want more than that, no. when you want a place where you can entertain. Exactly, and, that's what I want. Yeah. yeah. And I'd like a little quiet place, maybe with a table surrounded by nice flowers and just sit down up there and sketch and plant a, or whatever. A place where you can do whatever it is you want to do right. in, your, in your garden. And maybe screened by taller, you know, bushes of things? Enclosed. Enclosed, uh, enclosed. It, it can be a bower. Really? Yeah, that means an enclosed area. Yes. Well, that sounds very good. I mm -hmm. would like that. So that way people walking by you know, would not come into my garden because they don't know I'm there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and how do you do that? There's, 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 um, there's been a lot of talk about how our feelings about landscape yeah. are something that we inherit. It's almost in our DNA, and oh, yeah. it comes from being hunters in a savanna landscape. Yeah. People of all cultures, there have been lots of studies done that suggest that what people like, regardless of what, where their culture is, uh, people most like and are most comfortable with landscapes that have grass and have are semi-open but have areas of trees and shrubs, and that people are most comfortable often in a space where they feel some enclosure and support behind their back, right. and they can look out at the prospect of the landscape from where they are and still feel a sense of protection and being hidden from prying eyes. That's absolutely and it's, it's, wonderful. It's, it, it, is, it is evocative of what it was like for our ancestors when we'd have a fire next to a next to or enclosed by like uh, the base of a cliff you can look out on the landscape and see possible danger before yeah. it gets close to you and you're somewhat hidden from right. from them um, that that's something that's been applied to the architecture of Frank Lloyd Wright and to much of landscape design. It sounds really fascinating. Now, what about the gods at Versailles? Those are really beautiful, aren't they? They now, were think designed in an era in which European civilization was just beginning to feel secure in terms of um, man's, they, they were an expression of man's conquest of nature, that nature could be ordered and put into geometry, really? geometrical ideas. Oh, is that what the gods and are based on? That's, that's part of the whole intellectual atmosphere in which they were built. They were an expression of the king's power, 
They were places to entertain on a lavish scale. They were places to impress uh, ambassadors from other countries um, and to impress the king's uh, inferiors in the, in the, in the hierarchy. Um, they were designed to be looked out onto from the king's bedroom. Um, they were elaborately ordered and manicured down to the last leaf. Fantastic. That's generally not the way we like our gardens to be today. Even the most famous ones, say the White House gardens? Or? Well, I think about um, uh, Dumbarton Oaks, or close, closer to here, even think about um, uh, Tower Hill Botanical Garden. Oh, yeah. Those are extraordinary, it's a whole set of extraordinarily beautiful and brilliantly designed gardens. Right, Tower Hill, um, yeah. But they are much looser in terms of design. It's not a matter of imposing geometrical order on the universe. It's a matter of working with nature to make something that is beautiful uh, today, something that allows the plant to have a certain amount of say in what it wants to do. Wait, a lot of Tower Hill gods are enclosed in buildings too. Uh, there are there are some indoor spaces yeah. that are used for the display of plants. Yeah. Uh, but, but not most, gardens. Most of, most of Tower Hill is is exterior gardens. Right. Um, it, there are still places where you can go in the winter and still be in green space. Really? I've never gone there in the winter, except to see the, when they light them up there. Yeah, but that's a, fascinating. So those things that are out there are very sturdy plants then, if they could survive the New England live. Oh, winter. yes. Yes. So people can learn from seeing that, you know, which plants are surviving. It's, it, Tower Hill is set up to be, among other things, a place to educate people about uh, gardens and garden plants and various approaches to nature. They have courses there. Yeah. And you can also go there on your own and observe the plants in the landscape and say, oh yes, I really like that. I want to have that in my garden. Yeah. Someone there will tell you what it is. They are all, they're mostly labeled. Oh, they're um, labels, yeah. yeah. Have you ever copied anything at Tower Hill for any of your landscape designs? No. No, yours are all original. Yes. To the, that, that's very important. I think viewers like that, that isn't like, uh, you know, somebody else having the same design as they have, where they might have houses in, uh, that look just like someone well, else's house. Artists and designers in general do steal a lot from other, other artists, yep. from people who have gone before. Yeah. Um, but the important thing is to know how to adapt those ideas to whatever is appropriate for the problem at hand. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to have you start designing me. Here. I have half an acre of land. Oh, you are already well designed. I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to. You're, I'm so fascinated with all this new knowledge, and I'm sure there are viewers out there that are going, perhaps scratching their head and say, I never knew that, that that's what comes into designing your yard or grounds, whatever, you know, whatever level you're at, and uh, that they can be fascinated and give you privacy and be a pleasure to your eyes. Well, I think that's really, really great. John, it was wonderful hearing all this. Can you come back? With, well, first you'll design me a garden, right? And uh, we'll show it here to my viewers, and they can copy it. They'll probably call you and say, I want something like that, mm -hmm. but don't make it just like mine. Yeah. That you, you won't do that, right? Well, I look forward to working with you. Yeah. And, uh, uh, now, tell me the pleasure you derive. We have a few minutes left. How do you feel when you finish that garden that you've designed for somebody? What's the feeling? Well, I'm sufficiently, <laughs> I'm sufficiently obsessive about what I do 
that I'm never altogether satisfied oh, yeah. and, and um, need to leave off even though I might want to work on it further. You have just copied what I happens to me when I do a portrait. And when my husband was living, I would say, can you take the frame off that portrait? Because I can see the eye there. I just missed the right color and the right shape. So I need to fix it. He said, no, I'm not taking the frame off. It's fine. No, please, please. It's the same thing as being an artist with paper and pen and pencil and oils and all that, right? Well, you have to take a point and, 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 and make an end of it. <laughs> yeah, and say, it, this is it. Yeah. And now, do you throw parties when you, or do you give the owner like flowers and things like that? Um, or what, you've given them the flowers? Whatever is appropriate, but I think yes, it, giving them a garden means giving them flowers. Right. <laughs> so tell me, you have guns that you design from all ranges of price. I mean, we can have a simple one done that's not too expensive, and then it depends on the garden, right? What yeah. The um, well, it depends on how much somebody is interested in spending. That places certain limitations on, on yeah. what can be done. Right. Now, uh, John, if somebody wants to reach you, how can, how can they reach you to uh, have you come to talk to them? Um, I can be emailed at uh, gardentoday.org. Right. Garden Today, that's easy. And, uh, they'll, and then they can either call the station and get your number or whatever, right? Well, they can, they can, they can email me and, and I can send them my phone number. Good. Now, how long does it take you to plan, a, like, draw it out, like, say, roughly? It depends on whether it's a small project or a large project. Yeah. Um, um, it helps to start planning in the winter. Oh, really? When all of us in the green industry have more time in the winter yeah. than, um, than in the summer. So then when spring comes, you start the planting. But it can be done any time of year. Really? Uh, people mostly think about doing gardens in May. Yeah. And that's too late? It, well, no, if there's no time that's too late. It can right. be done any time of year. Um, the planning uh, process is an ongoing process. And it's easiest to do it in the winter. But it can be done any time of the Even year. Even though the ground is frozen? You can plan without actually having to break ground. I see. Yeah. When is the best time to break ground? April? Mar not March? April oh. is good because that's when the uh, nursery is starting to get their, their uh, plants in. Good. Well, John, this has been a pleasure for me. And uh, I hope you come back again, because there's more I want to ask you about <laughs> gardens. I think we just touched the very surface. Thank you, Lily. Yeah, it was a pleasure. So I want to tell my viewers how much I enjoyed this. I hope you did too. And when you turn off your TV, I, you know, I usually say something to encourage you. And this is what I want to say. Go out there, smile at everybody you see. They'll smile back. You can't resist a smile. And always think good of everyone you meet. Thanks for watching.